Hello everyone, welcome to my channel and to my disastrous craft room. <laughs> my name is Amanda and this is Virgin Lily where I talk about all of the crafty goodness that I have been up to over the past couple weeks. Today is May 31st, 2021, Memorial Day if you're in the States. I hope you had a wonderful Memorial Day. I know this will be going up the next day so it'll have been passed but I hope you had a great day and got to spend some time with friends and family. Um, I am going to be having a barbecue with some friends out in their backyard and letting our dogs play t this evening. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. But anyways, today is episode 82. It's a knitting episode and I'm really excited to jump into showing you guys everything today. Before we do that though, there are a couple places you can find me on the internet. The first being on Instagram at birch.and.lily. And then you can also find me on Ravelry and Love Crafts, which I will link down below for you. Um, I do have a whole bunch of knitting patterns up there available, some sock patterns, some shawl patterns. So if you are interested in that, be sure to check that out down below in the description. So let's jump right on in. I have one finished object to show you all this episode, which I'm excited to be able to wear now. Um, these are my Thrift Bloom socks. This is a pattern by Lisa Shoot, and I believe last episode I had one of these done, so I was able to finish up the second sock. I'll hold one up here. This one. <laughs> Um, but just a super cute pattern. Um, I did end up converting these socks into a pair of shorty socks, which is crazy easy to do. I know I've talked about this briefly on the last episode, but I'll say it again. All you need to do is knit your cuff and then go straight into your heel flap or your German short roll heel, whatever you're doing. Um, but that will give you a pair of cute little like shorty ankle length socks. So what did I do for these? I knit these up on 2.25 millimeter needles, which is a US one. I cast on 57 stitches for these. And I did follow the pattern that is written for the cuff. It's a little bit different than like a two by two rib, but basically a two by two rib. And then I did a heel flap and gusset, a slip stitch one, and moved on into the pattern for the foot and did a wedge toe. So yeah, really, really like these. They're quite neat. If I hold these both up, you'll see this mock cable pattern here. Doesn't look like it's on this sock. That is because they are written to be like mirror versions of each other. So that's kind of fun. Something a little bit different and really cute. What else can you say about a pair of socks? <laughs> um, the yarn that I did use for these is from Explore Knits and Fibers. This is one of their Denali sock sets, which is a 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon yarn. Um, and I believe the cuff color is Monarch and the main color is Gypsum. Could be the other way around. I could be totally wrong, but it's Monarch and Gypsum. <laughs> so that is this pair of socks. And like I said, I'm excited to wear them. It's a little chilly in the house today, so I might have to pop these on later. But I've been really enjoying knitting shorty socks, and you will see that shortly, because I have cast on another pair. Um, but yeah, that is my only finished object for this episode. So I do have two things that I've been working on over the past little bit. I guess it hasn't been two weeks like normal, because I was doing my catch-up video like a week and a half ago. Anyways, I have pulled out my Northeasterly blanket. This is a pattern by Skay Nanigans, um, and it is basically written to use up all of your scrap yarn. And I find for myself that I pull this out when I am feeling a little bit of a lack of inspiration. I don't know, something about it, it's simple, but it's fun to add colors into and kind of see them work together and what they do. So I have been working on that a lot in the past little bit. So I always show this bag, but I couldn't tell you where it's from. Does it even have a tag? I never remember. Uh, yeah, in a language I can't read, but I will link it down below in the description for you if I am able to, if the website still works. But my parents picked this up for me on a vacation and it ended up being the perfect size bag to hold my Northeasterly. It's growing though, and I don't know how much longer it's gonna fit in here, but that's okay. So for this, I am using a 2.75 millimeter needle, a US 2, um, and I am using a whole variety of scrap 
fingering weight yarns leftovers I have from different projects and stuff. And then I am alternating those with a skein of Knit Picks Stroll. This is the Dove Heather colorway. And it's a fingering weight. It is, what are you? 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon. So this is what I'm alternating between the colors because for me, I think I've said this before, but anyways, for me, I don't like the look of a whole bunch of different colors beside each other. It looks too random for my liking where adding the gray in between kind of adds some sort of structure to it, if that makes sense. Um, so let's see. What have I got going on here? I finished another whole row on it. So I've just kind of been going, I knit everything up until I had the full length of the blanket that I want. And then I've just been adding rows ever since that. And that seems to be working really well for me. So I have four rows done and I'm now working on my fifth. And this is going to be a disaster to hold up, but there's the bottom of it. So this row right here is the one that I've started adding on to next. But I'll kind of just scroll through, <laughs> I guess. I am trying to make this a king size blanket. So it is pretty darn large. Um, if there's any colors in here you're particularly interested in, let me know. You might have to screenshot the color and <laughs> draw a little arrow to it or something just so I know which one you're talking about. But I would be happy to try and help you figure out which one it is. I know what a lot of these are somehow. It shocks me <laughs> that I know what all of these are. But yeah, a lot of these are club colorways. Um, some of these, I'm trying to think, a lot of these are from socks. I think I have knit the odd shawl with some of these as well. Um, but it's such a fun project and such a good palette cleanser. Like I said, when I am feeling a lack of inspiration, this is what I end up going to. So I, yeah. I'm trying to think what else I could say about this. It's a scrap blanket. I know there's lots of different versions of scrap blankets out there. Um, I'm trying to think, is it Cozy Memories? That's the square one. Um, or I've seen a lot of people doing crochet ones with either like crochet hexagons or just stripey crochet. Um, lots of pretty options, but this is the one that stood out to me the most and what I've been enjoying working on the most. So this has been sitting with me and keeping me warm while I work on it on the couch the past week and a half. Um, and like I said, this is basically all I've been working on and I'm okay with that. So I just have a bag that I dump all of my yarn into when I'm done using it and pick from it to put into here as I'm working on it. Um, I know someone asked me, your gauge may be different than me and so that might make a different size chevron, but I do have, not including the like setup row for each of these, well I guess there's not a setup row after you start a new one, but there's 26 rows in each of these. 25 on the first one if you're not including the setup and then after that it ends up being 26 for each of them. So and there's a little end sticking out, whoopsies. Um, but such a beautiful blanket and I love just being able to look at this and be like, hey, that was from this pair of socks or this was from this and I don't know, it's a blanket full of memories. So super fun project, really enjoying it. If you do have any questions about it, feel free to ask me in the comments or shoot me an email. I do prefer you stick to comments or email. It's really hard to keep up with DMs on Instagram and they get lost and deleted and it's a disaster. <laughs> so if you could use one of those two methods, that would be fantastic. And then other than my Northeasterly blanket, I did cast on a pair of socks yesterday actually, and I've got quite a bit done on them because they are another shorty pair of socks. I decided to start using scrap yarn that's already gone into the Northeasterly blanket to now knit socks, if that makes sense. I'm trying to use up some of my stash because I have a whole bunch of like, I don't know what you call them, like rolling carts with drawers and they're full of all my scrap yarn and they're getting kind of full. So I would like to go through those and use up as much as I can and just make some gifts for people and stuff like that. So that's kind of my plan with this pair of socks. 
I have it in a bag from Birch Grove. This bag feels so tiny after holding that blanket. But I am knitting up a pair of Wild Bee socks. This is a pattern from Curious Handmade, Helen Stewart. Uh, this is one of the patterns that is a part of this year's Handmade Sock Society. If you don't know what that is, um, Helen do has done this. I think this is the fourth year. Um, but for a certain portion of the year, every month, every second month, it depends on the year how she runs it, um, but she does release a surprise sock pattern. So you purchase this whole book and then every month a new pattern gets added to it basically. Um, so this is the Wild Bees socks from that and I have again converted these into a pair of shorties, not as short as the previous pair I showed you. Um, they do have a little bit of a leg to them you can see there from the side, um, but there's still definitely a shorter pair of socks. So here they are. <laughs> I knit these up on 2.25 millimeter needles, a US one. Um, I did the 64 stitch size, which is a medium, and I did only do 10 rows for the cuff. Usually I do 15 rows for a cuff on a pair of socks, but because these are shorter, I thought 10 would be plenty. So that's what I did. It is a one by one twisted rib on here. And then I knit one repeat of the pattern. Whoop. I knit one repeat of the pattern for the leg and then moved in and put in a slip stitch heel flap and gusset. This is the called for heel in the pattern. Um, so that's what I ended up doing. And I'm almost done decreasing here in the instep and then I'll be able to just move into the foot and keep knitting until I'm ready to put in a toe. So nice and simple. There's no pattern on the back of the leg, just on the front and then on the front of the foot, obviously. But yeah, just a gorgeous pattern, not terribly complicated at all. There are no cables. It's just increases, decreases, and knit and purl stitches. So if you are more of a beginner knitter, this would be a relatively easy pattern if you were feeling a bit adventurous. And as for yarn for this pair of socks, this is a Woolberry Fiber Co. Gilmore Girls sock set club. This came out quite a while ago. I don't know, you may be able to find it somewhere or maybe you have it kicking around in your stash and you feel like pulling it out after you saw it here. But this colorway is called Will You Just Stand Still? So all of these club sock sets were named after different like quotes and stuff from Gilmore Girls. So that is this. It did originally come with a mini, um, but I don't keep track of those. They just all go into that basket right there. Um, and I pull from them if I need them for a little bit of something on a project. So I couldn't tell you which mini went with this, but using up the rest of the skein and enjoying it a lot. So that is all that I have been knitting over the past little while, but I was very excited yesterday to go and visit Spun in Ann Arbor with one of my very dear friends. Um, Spun just moved from its previous location into a larger space in the same building, and so they just opened up in their new space, and my friend and I decided to go and spend some time there and hang out and see what they had going, and it's absolutely beautiful. If you are near the Ann Arbor area, I would highly, highly recommend going and visiting Spun. It is amazing. I love it so much, just squishing all the yarn, and they have so much more stock now, a lot wider of a variety of stuff. So it was really fun to go and explore there. But I thought I would show you two of the books that I picked up while I was there. I didn't grab any yarn. I was kind of overwhelmed, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> um, but I did pick up a couple books that I have been eyeing. And once I was able to like hold them in my hands and do a quick flip through at the store, I really decided I needed them. So both of these are actually from Lina Magazine. Um, I don't know if you remember, if you've been around watching me for a while, thank you. <laughs> um, and if you haven't, well, you haven't missed that much. Um, but I purchased last year 52 Weeks of Socks by Lina Magazine, and they have now come out with 52 Weeks of Shawls. Um, this little thing slides here, so it's covering up the word shawl. But anyways, they have come out with 52 Weeks of Shawls, and I was a little iffy on it. Um, they didn't release as many photos of what was in it before they put it up for pre-order as they did with 52 Weeks of Socks. So I didn't put in a pre-order because I wasn't sure if I liked it or not. And now it's fully out and I guess I kind of just forgot about it and hadn't looked. Um, but when I saw it there at Spun, I decided to take a flip through it and there's some absolutely beautiful shawl patterns in here. Um, I don't know if I can show you some without giving away patterns. 
start at the beginning and see what I can find. So this is just the forward, but it shows a little stack there. Um, there are 52 patterns in here again, just like there was with 52 weeks of socks. This one here is absolutely gorgeous. I love the yarn too. But I'm really excited to... Here, I don't want to bend the pages in here, but if I hold it like this, there you can't see the information. But I'm really excited to kind of flip through this when I need some inspiration or when I want to start something new. Plus it's just a beautiful like collector piece type book. So I'm really excited to own this and I'm excited they had it there so I could kind of just like I said look through it myself and decide if it was something I was interested in investing in. It is definitely an investment. It's not the cheapest book out there. It is hardcover though. Um, and I did notice actually that 52 Weeks of Socks is releasing this year as like a paperback version. It was on Amazon. Um, so I'm assuming if this is something you're interested in and it's not within your price range, it will probably come out in a paperback next year too. Um, Cause I know the Socks one is like up for pre-order as a paperback right now. So, oh, this one's gorgeous as well. So pretty. So yeah, anyways, um, this was something that I invested at while I was there, or invested in, rather, while I was there, and I'm very excited about it. And then I also picked up the summer issue of Lina Magazine for this year. I have to say, they've really stepped up the printing on this. It's, is it thicker? Sorry, I'm just peeking at my other books in the closet. No, I would say it's about the same size, but the paper and even just the cover feels a lot more high quality, which I love. Um, but this is issue 11, summer 2021. If you are a sweater knitter, this is like absolutely, <laughs> this is not a sweater, obviously, but it's full of beautiful sweater patterns, shawls. It's a really pretty pair of, that doesn't give anything away, pretty pair of socks in here as well. Um, I haven't picked up every single line of magazine. Um, I kind of pick through and decide which one's actually called to me. But this one is beautiful. Like look at even just the detail on this shawl, or shawl, this sweater. So pretty. So if you haven't grabbed this one, this one I would highly recommend. Who are the designers in here? Do I have a list? There is, oh, here we go. I'll just give you a peek of the designers in here. Stephen West is in here. Um, a whole bunch of beautiful, beautiful designers, beautiful patterns. Um, and it does also include some articles and yeah, the last, I don't even know how many pages are all patterns, beautiful pictures, lots of inspiration. I'll stop rambling, but this is a good one too. If you don't have the money to invest in 52 weeks of socks, but you are wanting to kind of add to your knitting library, I would grab this guy. So that is everything that I have to show you guys this episode. I hope you found some inspiration. If you did, definitely consider subscribing and hitting the thumbs up button if you haven't already. Um, means a lot to me. And thank you so much for joining me. I love filming these videos and I think I would do it no matter what, but just to see all the support that I have from everyone definitely makes it even more worth it. So I appreciate that a lot. I will see you all next week for a cross stitch episode. Um, one question I do have, if you're still here actually, what time do you prefer for an upload time? I have been putting my videos up at 10 a.m. Eastern time, but last week I tried 11 Eastern time, it did not seem to do as well, so obviously that's not great. Um, do you guys like the 10 a.m. Eastern time upload time? Let me know. Anyways, I'll stop rambling. I will see you all again next week, and thank you again for joining me. Bye! <music>